Cross broadcast, Ephesians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all praise you father thank you lord for the reading of your word Yeah. 
walk in the darkness and the truth's not in us. If we walk in the light, we will have fellowship sweet and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from sin. He is the way and the truth and in Him Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the written word that you've given us, Lord. The written word. Praise your holy name. In Ephesians 1, Paul, the book of Ephesians is a book of warfare. It's the warfare book to the church. Hallelujah. There are three sections in Ephesians that Paul's bringing out to the church. Some people will say, well, that was written to the Ephesians, but it's also written to the faithful in Christ Jesus. That's us when we're walking according to his word and his will. Verse 2, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I want you to listen to what it says in Christ. In Christ. Listen how many times this phrase in Christ, in him, in himself, is mentioned in this one chapter of Ephesians. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. A lot of times people, when we read the Bible in the church today in America and the West, it's always geared towards self. It's always about ourself. But clearly God is showing us in his word it's about Jesus. It's in him. It's a, for his will, for his good pleasure. To the praise, verse 6, of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The beloved is Jesus. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Who's the emphasis on? It's always on Jesus. It's always on the Father. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. It's all for him. All for him. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, that's the times we're in right now, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, always for him, always for Jesus in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. In whom, Jesus, also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him 
who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God doesn't work after the counsel of our will. God doesn't work after the counsel of the world ruler's will. God works after the counsel of his own will. And when God wills something, it comes to pass. It is a done deal. Hallelujah. And God willed to have a people, a people called out of the ways of the world, called out and separated unto him. Hallelujah. So the enemy doesn't like it. So he comes in and attacks on every front he can find, attacking God's people who he has called out of the world. Hallelujah. That we should be, verse 12, to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted, that in whom, that's Jesus. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom? In Jesus. Also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. See, it's always him, his. He gets the glory, not us. He shares his glory with us, but he gets all of the glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, his calling, see, his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Everybody, a lot of times, they're, all they're talking about is their inheritance. What about his inheritance in the saints? Hallelujah. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power? See, the power of God is so mighty. It's the power, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Praise God. Jesus is seated at the father's right hand with a flesh and bone body, hallelujah, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Hallelujah. We can see here from this, this, the Lord is saying it's all about Jesus. This is showing us our position. Are we in Jesus Christ? Are we seated with him in the spiritual realm? Are we born again? Hallelujah. I have this Bible here and I wrote notes in on the side. I'm going to read this. It's all about the Son of God. All glory and honor and praise be unto him forever and ever. He alone is worthy. Amen. In Christ, that phrase in Christ in chapter 1 is mentioned 12 times. In him, in Christ, himself, in himself. It's always focused to the Father. It's focused to Jesus at the Father's right hand. We are not to be the focus in this walk that we're on. In the military, they have the supreme command. And when the supreme command is doing his job right, he knows, the supreme commander knows his troops, and the Lord Jesus is the supreme commander in the spiritual realm. There are two armies on this earth. There's a true and living God, the army of the true and living God. That's of Christians who are born again and filled with his spirit. And if you're not a Christian, you need to be a Christian to be on the right side. Hallelujah. And then there's the army of the wicked one, the devil, the takers, the pagans and the religious and Pharisees, and those whom Jesus is going to say one day to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So we have to make sure that we're in Christ. And when we're in him, we're seated with him. We're going to get to that here in a minute in chapter 2. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if we're seated with him in heavenly places, we understand. We have knowledge and revelation of him. See? 
and then we know what our supreme commander commands of us and demands of us. So right now in the first chapter and the second chapter we're talking about what Paul is writing to the Ephesians is to sit where we are seated, where we are in the spirit, okay? This is a vital part of our warfare in the earth. So let's move on to chapter 2. And you want to read chapter 2 out of the Amplified? Read chapter 2 out of the Amplified Bible. And you he made alive when you were dead or slain by your trespasses and sins, in which at one time you walked habitually. You were following the course and fashion of this world. You know, unfortunately, a lot are still following the course and the fashion of this world. But the Bible says right here in this chapter that we are not supposed to be following the course and the fashion of this world Amen. anymore. Amen. We are supposed to be conforming to the image of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. In which at one time you walked habitually. You were following the course and the fashion of this world. Were under the sway of the tendency of this present age. The tendency of this present age. That's a good version. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Following the prince of the power of the air. That's the devil. Thank As you, I'm Jesus. reading this, I just want everybody that's listening, you know, just ask yourself the question here. Are we dead to our pres trespasses and sins? Do we still walk habitually in the course and the fashion of this world? Are we still under the sway of the tendency of this present age? Do we follow the prince of the power of the air? Or do we follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. You were obedient to him and were under his control. Talking about before, this is like before a person is saved. Right. Okay? Amen. It is not supposed to be afterwards. Paul is explaining about what we were like. He's talking to the Ephesians. Now, they were a pagan people. They worshiped the goddess Diana, okay, full of paganism. So go on. Amen. And, and, and he's talking to us today, American Christian, Western Christian, Western Europe, and Australia, full of materialism. Listen to the words of the Lord through the Apostle Paul. Okay, this is before we get saved, right? We're following the prince of the power of the air before we get saved. You know, verse 3? 2. Verse 2. You were obedient to him, talking about the devil, and were under his control. Now keep in mind this is before a person gets saved. The demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience. In the sons of disobedience. Could that be a Christian that's in disobedience? Yes. And Someone who's truly saved but still kicking against and bucking up against God? Right. But the Bible also says, I believe it is in Colossians um, or Galatians, one of them, that those that do such things, mentioning the things of the flesh, will not see the kingdom. Amen. Galatians 5. And... It also specifies that those that will not see the kingdom of God are the sons of disobedience. Okay, and now here it goes. The demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. Among these, we as well as you once lived. Okay, still talking about before, not after a person gets saved. The things that I'm mentioning right here in the Word is not supposed to be taking place after we're saved. Among these we are well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, nature obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. 
We were then by nature children. Now listen to this. We were. Supposed to be past tense. We were then by nature children of God's wrath. Did you hear that? God's wrath. And heirs of his indignation. Like the rest of mankind. Wow. Still talking about before, okay? Before a person is saved. But he's, he's drawing a distinction, though, now. He's drawing a right. distinction between the Ephesian church, these believers who came in and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They repented of their idolatry. They repented of their lust. They repented of their perversions. And he's reminding them. This is how you were before. Right. That's the okay. key. Repentance. Okay. Repentance. Now, this is chapter two. We're still talking about where we're sitting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And that is the key is repentance and turning away. Verse four. But God so rich. Amen. Is he in his mercy. Glory to you, Jesus. Because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead and slain by our own shortcomings and Amen. trespasses, Hallelujah. he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Okay, in union with Christ. Hallelujah. Keep going. Praise God. He gave us the very life of Christ himself. The same new life, new, all things made new, the old man's supposed to be passed away. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him. For it is by grace, by his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. And he raised us up together with him. And he made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, Amen. the anointed one. Amen. Now look at that verse six and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is the order. Paul is showing us the order of the warfare of the church. We have to be sitting, okay, and knowing that we are seated, okay, in Christ Jesus on his throne at the Father's right hand. Glory. Who has all power? Who has all power? Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The almighty God. All oh, verse, what is it again? Uh, verse 22 of chapter 1, and hath put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church under his feet. So when we're in him sitting at the father's right hand, hallelujah, all things are under our feet. How about those spirits of vanity? Are they under our feet today? How about those spirits of anger? Those spirits of, of lust and perversion? Spirits that uh, of just empty minds and, and just minds that are running after the things of the world and all sorts of material. Is that stuff under our feet today? It has to be under our feet because God has given us the grace and the power to overcome these kinds of things that attack us. Hallelujah. Keep reading, Sharon. You know, I want to go back to verse 5 for a minute Amen. because go, go, go. it says, By his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve. You know, none of us deserve his favor or his mercy. Amen. You know, I heard somebody one time, they said that they heard a man praying to God and say, God, give me what I deserve. Oh, and you know what? We all deserve hell. Amen. But in the mercy of God, he reached down and he pulled us out of the pit and gave us eternal life, Amen. gave us repentance Amen. of our sins, Hallelujah. turning away from the old <laughs> Thank life. You, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Delivering us from judgment and making us partakers of his salvation. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasur immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor, 
in kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. You know, but that doesn't mean we're to trample on the grace of God. You know, and Paul said, you know, what are you going to go out and just sin? Yeah, that grace may abound. Well, Amen. Yeah. God forbid, you know. Yeah, and I've, you know, a lot of people have that attitude, you know. Right. Oh, well, God will forgive me. Right. Oh, well, I'll do it, but God will forgive me. Right, and it goes back to what is sin, too, because 1 John teaches us in 1 John 3, what is sin? It's the transgression of the law. Praise God. Okay, what verse are you on now? 7. Verse 7, okay. Chapter 2, verse 7, Ephesians. And go, let's see, verse 8. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Amen. It isn't anything that we can do in Amen. paying the price for our own sins. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Thank you, Lord. To die and be the sacrifice for our sins. Amen. Hallelujah to the that, King. That we may have eternal life. Not Praise because of works, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do. So no one can pride himself in it or take the glory for himself. Amen. Hallelujah. We, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Okay, do you think that means living the good life or living the Christ life? The, the Christ good life. life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it's like, and as she was reading, you know, and I'm seeing these phrases in Christ and through Christ in chapter two of Ephesians, eight times Paul uses the phrase in Christ, through Christ, you know, in him, by him. And it's always him. It's him. Okay. God wants our focus to be vertical, not horizontal on this earth. That's what he's been showing us, you know, and I'm learning that. And I got a lot to learn. Praise God. Go ahead, honey. Therefore, remember that at one time you were Gentiles, heathen, in the flesh. You know, I just got to stop right here because I really think the Lord is just calling to account his people that, that call their self by his name. And. You know, the warfare that a Christian goes through is pretty intense, and it's it's going to get more intense as the time goes on. And we have to be solid in the rock, and we have to know who our Lord is. Amen. And, you know, if we profess the name of Jesus, but then our Lord and our, our life shows forth that our Lord is self, then, you know... Say it, that again. Say that again. If our life shows forth, we profess Jesus Christ, okay? If we profess the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, but then our life will show forth that our Lord is really not the Lord Jesus Christ itself. Right. It's okay. like that's okay. that's what's on the throne right. of our heart instead of the Lord Jesus Christ, because right. it'll show forth in a person's life. Amen. It will show forth in our life what Lord we have. Amen. Hallelujah. And, you know, the New Age movements and everything, the Lord is self. 
and a lot of Christians the Lord himself. Amen. Same thing. Same message being preached in a lot of churches today as being preached in the new age. It's all for you. God did this all for you. The whole counsel of the almighty God is wrapped up in one person, and that's Jesus Christ, his precious son. It's not in us, okay? It's in Jesus, see? If we want to get to the Father, we have to go to Jesus, okay? We have to do what he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Where is the kingdom of God today? Within. It's within us. He said, you can't see it with your eye. He said, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay. It's within us. But everybody's looking horizontally, waiting for the kingdom of God to come. Right? Waiting for it to materialize in this material realm. And they all think they're going to be driving gold Rolls Royces or something. You know, It's not going to happen that way. The kingdom of God is within us. It's the kingdom of Jesus Christ in us, teaching us how to be lowly. We're going to get to that here in Ephesians. If we don't finish this this week, we're going to. This is a powerful book. We can study for a year. Praise God. Go ahead, honey. What what verse are you at? Mm, let's see here. I think verse eleven. Verse eleven. Hallelujah. Chapter two, verse eleven, Ephesians. So anyway, let's let's finish the point you were talking about first. About self being Lord of our life. Because as a Christian, we are called upon to die to self. Jesus said, deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow him. And we do that more and more each day as we're walking and getting closer and realizing our position in Christ, which is seated at the Father's right hand. You know, the Lord is the Lord of our life. Amen. Not self. Right. But sometimes in our life and in in God's people's life, that old flesh will get in there. Amen. And our actions may not show forth that, that Jesus is Lord of our life. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And that's why, especially in this time and the closer we get to the return of the Lord, we have to stay close to the Lord and, and just cling to him with oh, all our heart, you know, and Jesus. and ask him to just cleanse us, you know, anything that's standing in the way or, you know, messing up that communication between him and us. Amen. Ask the Lord to remove it. Amen. And help you. Help us, Father. Help us, Father. Help us, Father. And to keep us walking on the path that we should be on. Thank you, Lord. Verse 11, Therefore remember that at one time you were Gentiles, heathen in the flesh, called uncircumcision by those who called themselves circumcision, itself a mere mark in the flesh made by human hands. Remember that you were at that time separated, living apart from Christ, Excluded from all part in him, utterly estranged and outlawed from the rights of Israel as a nation, and strangers with no share in the sacred compacts of the messianic promise, with no knowledge of our right in God's agreements, his covenants. Now this is all talking about before. Right. And, and having, and the King James says, and without God in the world, you know. Strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you're lost today and you know you're lost because when you have Jesus, you know you have him. You just know it. And if you're lost today, then you're without hope. You don't have any hope. You're without God in this wicked world. Go ahead, honey. Verse 13. You know those... that are not have not been born again you're far you are far away from the lord right now the salvation of the lord will bring you near amen and Hallelujah. that's what this verse is about right here but now in christ jesus you who once were so far away 
through, by, and in the blood of Christ have been brought near. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. In Christ Jesus. It's something that's happening in him. See? In John 17, Jesus said, Father, go ahead, honey, keep reading. I'm going to turn over there and I'll just read that real quick. For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. He has made us both Jew and Gentile one body and has broken down and destroyed and abolished the hostile dividing wall between us. Amen. Hallelujah. In John 17, verse 2, Jesus says, As thou hast given him power. Okay. Let me just, I got to read verse 1 because it sets up verse 2. John 17, 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. See, The Father gave us to Jesus. See? The Father put us in Jesus Christ. He's one brought us. See? He did the work. Hallelujah. Keep going, baby. Praise God. By abolishing in his own crucified flesh the enmity caused by the law with its decrees and ordinances which he annulled that he from the two might create in himself in himself one new man amen one new quality of humanity out of the two so making peace and he designed to reconcile to god both jew and gentile united in a single body by means of his cross thereby killing the mutual enmity and bringing the feud to an end amen and he came and he preached the glad tidings of peace to you who were afar off and peace to those who were near for it is through him that we both whether far off or near now have an introduction or an access by one holy spirit to the father amen so that we are able to approach him therefore you are no longer outsiders exiles migrants and aliens excluded from the rights of citizens but you now share citizenship with the saints god's own people consecrated and set apart for himself and you belong to god's own household hallelujah you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with christ jesus himself the chief cornerstone glory in him the whole structure is joined bound and welded together harmoniously and it continues to rise and grow and increase into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated, and sacred to the presence of the Lord. In Him, and in fellowship with one another, you yourselves also are being built up into this structure with the rest to form a fixed abode and dwelling place of God in by and through the spirit amen you know the lord he is building his church right now amen he is building his true church the church without walls glory to god and you know like john was saying so many times we we look at this natural realm and we're not looking at the spiritual realm the way the lord wants us to because everything Practically, the Lord talked about he was always talking in the spiritual realm. And so many times, that's why they didn't understand what he was saying. Because he was always talking spirit. Amen. That's right. That's right. I want to look at verse, uh, verse 20 again of chapter 2. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets 
Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom that's in Jesus all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord it's in Jesus Jesus is that holy temple see he told the Pharisees in John chapter 2 destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up it's the temple of the human body see the body that was prepared for him okay in the womb of Mary okay destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up see Almighty God it says in Colossians that Jesus Christ the fullness the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ bodily now when we get into chapter 3 of this book of Ephesians we're going to see where God is saying Paul is saying that all the fullness of God might dwell in us okay now that's a very serious statement okay but it can be see where we're just full of God and it's overflowing see Jesus could contain it okay he could contain the fullness of God you understand what I'm saying but us we won't be able to contain it praise God it's just gonna there's so much it just flow out hallelujah praise God you know in verse 20 it says Jesus is the chief cornerstone okay why do they call Jesus the cornerstone? Isn't that like the centrality, the central point? It's the cornerstone is the it's the anchor point of the whole structure. Anchor point. Yeah. It's the first piece to go in. Mm. It's the very first one. Oh. It's not the capstone. It's the cornerstone. It's the very first piece that, that that's laid in the building. Wow. See? He was slain from the foundation of the world, see. Okay. People say, What do you mean? Well, in, it's over in Revelation 13. And in Revelation 13, John is giving us understanding, revelation. Okay, he's giving us revelation. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. In 13, it says, okay, in verse... Oh, I need my other Bible, praise God. Hallelujah. I got to grab my other Bible. Bear with me a little bit. Because you have one Bible that's your special Bible, and that's where you know where everything's at by column. And you you can find it a lot easier. Here it is. Verse 8, 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth, is talking about the beast, shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world okay so the cross it's it's always been from the foundation of the world the father knew nothing surprised the father nothing surprises god at all this is part of the plan okay to show forth his great and awesome glory his great and awesome mercy his great and awesome love okay to those whom he has chosen Many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. Those that aren't chosen, oh, cry out to be chosen. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. You know, this is just really sticking in my mind here about the chief cornerstone because then the next verse is, in him the whole structure is joined. Okay, so if we don't have the cornerstone, the first piece set in the foundation how is this going to be built amen it has to be him it has to be him he's the first piece hallelujah we have to have jesus and in this warfare he is the one who gives us the orders and shows us when we're succumbing to spirits or we're letting little secondary little things just get us all riled up in our marriages or in our lives or in our homes or in our schools or in our workplace little stuff that just gets us all set on edge this is all the enemy trying to just take the focus off of the big picture okay which is Christ within us the hope of glory see Christ Jesus within us and us in him sitting at the father's right hand if the Christian today, if we could really understand and have the knowledge and the spiritual wisdom that God wants to give us, 
then we would be a formidable force in the earth. And when God begins to do that more and more, okay, as we surrender more and more to him for him to take us and mold us and fashion us, we are the clay, he is the potter, and do with us as he wants, then we're going to be seeing more manifestations of the holiness of God in our lives and through us. And that's going to make the devil and the world mad, and they're going to be coming against a little bit more. See, because Paul said, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hallelujah. We also have to know and be aware when a spirit is operating on us. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, uh, this is just kind of paraphrasing it a little bit. It talks about, you know, when you you're helping somebody and you're you're helping this person and this person uh, has these problems and maybe spirits and all this. Well, there, the Bible gives us a warning. Be careful that you yourself do not fall into this thing of the person you're helping. Right. It, when you're trying to pull someone out of the fire, you know, that you don't get stained. Right. You know. And that's what Paul said that in Galatians and Jude said it in the book of Jude, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and go ahead and just keep talking. We have to be aware and we have to know when things are operating like that and be aware and recognize it uh, because this is a battle that we're in. And we have to be aware when these kind of things happen or when they're even operating on us. Amen. We have to be aware of it. We have to know that because a lot of times, you know, you will be helping somebody. Maybe you'll be ministering to somebody, and you'll be so involved in everything. Well, there there might be a lot of spirits with that person, and they might start affecting us or the Our person. Our behavior, Amen. right? Amen. And we have to be aware that that is happening because the Bible gives us a warning about it anyway. So it's just all these things that the Lord He wants us to be aware of. He wants us to know that we're not struggling against flesh and blood and sometimes that's so hard for us to see that because maybe the person is right in front of us that the spirits are operating through or on the phone or whatever that maybe we're hearing it or whatever and we have to know we are not fighting against flesh and blood we're it's these principalities in high places amen principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness Mm -hmm. amen and when we get to that part about standing in this uh, Ephesians, in, a, in this is a Ephesians series, I believe that's what it'll be called, I guess, or just our warfare, because this will take us, I mean, we could travel all through the word of God, but sometimes it's not easy to bring um, a message forth because you want to bring it forth and not, um, you want to use practical issues, practical terms where we can apply what God is showing us to our life today and so when we're looking at the first century Christian we kind of sometimes think well how can I apply that to my life today but we fail to understand what is the sin is sin and and all sin is rebellion against God it's it's rebellion against the laws of God and so that is the same so Paul is clearly pointing out to us we are seated in heavenly places. That is the first line of defense in this spiritual warfare, in this this warfare that is ours. It's our warfare. It belongs to the church. We are the representative of Jesus Christ on this earth, okay, to a wicked and to a fallen mankind, okay? Jesus came in and bound the strong man, which is Satan. He came into this earth and bound the strong man, which is Satan. And he's spoiling his kingdom all over the earth. And now the devil's on a rampage and just getting madder and madder and madder. And the more he tries to destroy the church of Jesus Christ, the more it blossoms, the more it grows. Now, the perfect example of that is China. Okay. How many books have we read on the stories in China when the home church, you know, when they came in and really clamped down in the 60s? And, you know, there was a little let up in the late 50s, but then around 68, 69, they really clamped down on the church. And they just started throwing them in jail, all the pastors and anyone that believed. But the church started blossoming and growing, you know. And now there's like over 100 million, 150 million, 200 million people 
in the underground church in China, praise God, because it's just growing and growing and growing. You can't stop God. See, You're not going to stop it. Nobody will. Praise God. You know, I want to thank the Lord that um, sometimes he does let his people be um, maybe a little ignorant of the devil's devices for just a short time. Amen. And uh, for his own purposes, though, because uh, it's like he's trapping the enemy by allowing his people to just for that short time be a little ignorant of maybe what the devil's doing. And so then it just brings out what he's doing. And, you know, things are not always what they look like or what they sound like. And the devil can quote the word like everything. The New Agers use the word. Amen. You know, Satanists use the word. Amen. And they can quote it well. And they can manipulate it well. Amen. And it's... That's why it's so important to have a true relationship with the Lord God Almighty, have the Holy Spirit living within, on the throne of our heart, being the Lord of our life in every area. That's why it's so important because there's so many things out there that try to trip you up, try to get you to fall into a trap, you know, yeah, maybe it sounds good. It sounds so much like the Lord. It sounds so much like the Holy Spirit. But there's just that little quirk in your spirit that just doesn't line up. Amen. It's like, Lord, that just doesn't line up. Why do I have this little quirk in my spirit about this? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it sounds right. The person is quoting the Word of God. The person is talking the talk. But things just don't light up, Lord. What is it? We better pay attention to that still, small voice in our heart. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He's giving us discernment about the situation. Praise God. And you know, the more that we yield to that discernment, to the Holy Spirit, and obey what we're sensing, the more the Lord will give us. He'll give us more and more, you know, as we obey. But there is such a deception out here. People can talk the talk. They know the Bible. But they are no more of the Lord Jesus Christ than my little Yorkie sitting right down here by Amen. my feet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And it is such a deception. Such a deception. And the devil is out like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Amen, And sister. he's devouring a lot of people because of that very thing. Praise you, Lord. Thank because you, they're Jesus. not paying attention Hallelujah. to that still, small voice within the Lord Jesus Christ saying, This is not of me. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want you to do this. This is not of me. This is not where I want you to go. This is not what I want you to do. Praise your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When all the time, what are you hearing in the natural? You're hearing the word of God. You're hearing all these things that sound so religious and so right. Keep in mind, the Satanists know the word of God. They know Amen. how to twist Amen. it. They know how to use it in each situation. The Amen. devil quoted the word to our Lord. Amen. Keep that in mind. Hallelujah. But tell Amen. me something. If the life does not line up with the mouth, then you better be asking the Lord about it. Amen. And paying attention to the actions. Amen. And out to the, the walk. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. Jesus said. Amen. Because Hallelujah. the walk will line up with the mouth if it's the true spirit of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it will. Praise your Father. You Thank know, you sometimes Jesus. we fall. You know, sometimes John and I fall and get in the flesh. And, you know, I'm sure there's lots out there that do the same, and we have to turn and repent. But to constantly walk that way and have the mouth that way and have the walk that way, that's not of God. A person Amen. has not been renewed and has not been born again if that's the case. Amen. Because Amen. there is a change. There's a 180 change in a person's life if they truly are saved. 
Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And there will be complete changes made in every way, in the talk, in the dress, in the actions, in, in what they do in their daily life. There will be a drastic change if there has been a true conversion with the living Christ living within somebody. You know, there's a lot of times that when the Lord was teaching us about that still small voice, that maybe sometimes we didn't heed that still small voice and boy what what bad things took place amen we've Hallelujah. learned that the hard way to listen to listen when you get that little quirk in your spirit and you just something's not right lord something just don't line up here pay attention to it amen go before the lord with it and pray and ask the lord to reveal to you what he's trying to show you Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go ahead and pray, honey. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for your word, Lord, and that really, Lord, your word speaks for itself. All we can really do, Lord, is add what you've shown us in our life, Lord God. But your word is the thing that breaks the yoke, Lord. Your word is the thing that brings life. Your word is the thing, Lord. Your life, your sacrifice, Lord. It's all Amen. about you. Hallelujah. It's not about us. It's not about anybody out there listening. It's about you, and it's about your will, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what we want, Lord God. Amen. And I pray anybody listening that it does not know the Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just pierce their heart with your Holy Spirit, for you're the one that draws them, Lord. We're not the one that does it. Your Holy Spirit is the one that does it. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that you will pierce their heart with gentle conviction, Lord God. Let them fall to their knees in repentance and turn 180 today, Lord, into new life. Hallelujah. Come up out of that tomb. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Into the life Thank of you, the Lord. risen Christ. Amen, Lord. And just bless them with your salvation, your peace, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And, Lord, I do pray right now for the body of Christ that you would grant unto us the spirit of revelation and knowledge of your Son, Father. Hallelujah. Keep us, Lord, ever in the palm of your hand. Lead us and guide us and keep us, O God. And draw, Father, draw. Keep drawing, Lord. Draw the sinners to Jesus, Father. And give them hearts of repentance, we pray, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. By the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Bless you.